for part two. So I went ahead and got all my jelly plates out. I've got this little three by five one right here and I'm not sure I'm gonna use it. I just got it out. And then I've got my, what is this, eight by 10, I'm pretty sure. Huh, it's not saying right off the bat. I'm sure that's what this one is. I'm using this one for my palette today. It's right here. And then I'm going to use my big 12 by 14 for printing on. I just like to use the big plate so that I can do little partial spots here and there. And I'm using my Patty Tully Parish stencils. Hey, Patty. So I'm not going to use all of what's in my kit. I'm just going to use these ones here. I'm going to use the Outback, uh, Tribal Marks, Cave Etchings, and the Bamboo one too. I'm going to use it as a wall here. Okay. So that's what I'm up to with this. And then I've got a bunch of papers that I already have prints on. I wanted to do some tissue. I'll probably just do that later. I want to start off with, get my act together here. I've got a little stack of partially printed stuff here that I want to kind of use the stencils and kind of finish some of these up because you know for me with my jelly plate it really does take layers for it to look really nice in just the way I do it. I like to have a lot of layers. Robin has really taught me I'm a better jelly plate printer because of Robin McClendon and this is not a design team challenge but I'm putting everybody's links on the design team below this video. Now in part one I just put the Patty Tully Parish um, iStencil.com links so that you could shop the stencils but this one I'm just going to go ahead and do everybody's links just because it's kind of tied in with the design team so um, what Robin does is she takes her plate and she calls it activating it I really just like to leave mine on that thing but she'll take her plate and kind of roll it and move it around to kind of loosen up those layers of paint underneath this one is so big I'm struggling with it a bit, but you get the idea. So you just want to activate your plate by loosening up those lower, those uh, dried up layers of paint. And I learned from Robin, and it's funny, she was talking about it. Here I am fussing with this thing. She was talking about how when she first got her jelly plate, she was trying to clean it and not able to get the thing clean. So she gave up on it and left it kind of like this. And then the next time she pulled it out, she did a thin layer of paint and pulled a print and got all of this undercoat um, up on her print. And that's how she discovered this. And then she was generous enough to share that with the rest of us. And I'm not sure what video that is, but I'll tell you what, any of um, Robin's videos or any of the other girls' videos, you cannot go wrong. You will learn a ton of stuff. But um, that is how we roll now. And I love that about jelly printing. See, all of my plates here are dirty. I usually use this one for my palette and then I pull prints off of it as well and even my little ones got old paint on it so all that's going to come up with the next use really awesome so now I showed you the papers we're going to be using I'm just sticking with goldens and I grabbed a few colors to do a couple different palettes and I'm just going to mix and match. I'm almost out of my turquoise. I've got like a few drops of this teal in here and I need to go and buy some more. I've got a big Payne's gray. I just bought a carbon black. And then I've got a, a couple neutral grays. 
And then I've got this iridescent bronze. I've got a couple of these. I probably just used the, I have a few of these. So this one's almost gone. So I'll start with that one today. But these are the colors I'm kind of going for. I really like a brown and blue combination. So I'm actually going to grab, I've got the sepia out. I like this dark brown and this dark blue combo. And then I grab some Titan Buff just to tone everything down. It's a great color to tone stuff down with. So I'm just going to do whatever I feel. Real intuitional jelly printing session. I don't have a plan. I want to do a couple more sessions. I have a bunch of Lindy Stamp Gang sprays. So I want to definitely do a spray session. I, I'm not necessarily going to spray the plate. I think I'll probably more um, drip the sprays on here because I don't know if I want to spray. But I also want to do watercolor. Robin's done a lot of watercolor jelly printing. And I'm sure there's a lot of it out here on YouTube already. But... I've been busy with other projects, as you know, for those of you that watch me. And so I'm going to be going in that direction. Plus, the weather's getting nicer, and I'm really gearing up for um, eco dyeing this year. I want to do a bunch more eco dyed kits. But that's a story for another day. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm also using this newsprint, and I've showed it before. It's real cheap. Canson newsprint is what this is called. And you can find it all over, really. I get mine at Hobby Lobby because I like to use my coupon if it's not already on sale. And uh, they go half off quite often. But I like to use this newsprint because it's thinner. And it just, I think it really prints really nice. And then this is, I don't even know what this is, some kind of tissue paper. We'll just see how it does. Um, I just grab whatever and start rolling with it. So now I have buried my ch -ch -ch rollers. There they are. I've got two. I like to work with two because it's nice to have a wet and a dry really is why I like to work with two. Now I've got all this really gorgeous white cracking on here, tight and buff cracking. So I think I'm just going to make a couple quick prints. I'm going to go with the burnt sienna here. And the trick is to go kind of thin because if you go too thick it won't pull anything up. That'll make a nice contrast. Oh, and I should have just put it on my other one and then... The reason why I don't like to put paint directly on my plate is because then you can get those blobs. And sometimes I want that, but sometimes I don't. So I'll just roll them out as best I can. A thinner coat is definitely better to pull up the undercoatings. This might be too thin. I might have worked it too much. So let's take a look here. I'm going to go ahead and use this newsprint and see what I get. Here's another good reason to have your dry one. I might not have enough paint on my plate. Yeah, it's not pulling anything. Okay, it's not enough. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to go with this Nickel Azo Gold. It's a fluid. And I'm just going to put it over here. Let me scooch you. I'll just put a little generous little amount here on this plate of this. Oh, this color is so gorgeous. So now I'll have that. Uh, what did I use? I went and lost it already. The burnt sienna is underneath. It's been a while since I've worked with my plates. I'm really excited to start working with my plates again. Okay, that's got some stick to it now. Let's see if we can get that some of that. Ooh, nice. Getting a little of that undercoating. That's why Robin um, 
rolls her plate a bunch is to get that activated underneath. But look, that's really pretty already. So while I've got this wet, I want to go ahead and use it up here. I'm just going to keep trying to pull some of that. i got a little drippage going on here. Try to pull as much off of here as I can. I almost really like that print I just did so much that I don't know if I want to print over it again. Let's try this and see what happens. This is just some kind of um, probably Dollar Tree tissue paper. May have to roll my plate. Oh, that's getting some goodies on it. Try to really crank down on that pretty hard and see what I can get here. Getting some more. It's starting to activate. You've just got to start working your plate. Wow. I think that's really pretty. This will definitely need another coat, but look, it's even pulling up the dark that was under the white that I didn't even know was there. So let's use, let's try a little bit of this bronze, iridescent bronze. I'm going to add that in here. Oh, that's quite a bit, probably too much. That's okay. We'll just mess with it. That's a pretty thin coat right there. So you just play with your plate and you start to get a feel for what works and what doesn't, of course. I think I'll do a couple of these prints and then I think what I'm going to do is I'll keep going but I'm just going to play music. Ooh, let's see what we got here. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. I like that. So the plate is starting to activate and it does need sheep. Robin really gets in there and works her plate. I love the golden paints. Of course I started off, off with the really cheap craft acrylics when I started doing all these things and you know the price of golden just really turned me off and uh, to be perfectly honest but golden paints are unbelievable. And I always, um, I, I just slowly build my collection. I'll go into Michael's and I'll use, um, every now and then they have a 40% off fine art sale. And when they do that, I'll buy a few of the colors. Um, but otherwise, I'll go in for something else, you know, and I'll just grab a tube of paint and use my coupon on it when it's not on sale. And then that way I can get more. That's how I build my collection, you know. Just a little at a time because it is intimidating. I mean, if, you know, I don't always have, I'd love to have a bunch of money to go in and drop it every time I go but that's just not the case in my world today so I just slowly build and it works beautifully oh I like that so I had crumpled up this tissue paper to get that crinkled up texture that came out real pretty I want to do some more layers of that now I do notice that these are pretty thick with paint and you don't necessarily get the best pulls because it doesn't stick as well as um, brand new paper. Brand new paper is so absorbent that it really sticks. But let's try to pull a little bit more. 
I'm going back to the quinacridone. And like I was saying a minute ago, I'm just going to play around here for a sec. And then what I'll do is play some music. That's so thin. And then I'm going to edit out all the stuff that you don't need to see just to kind of speed up the video. But I'll keep all the stencil printing and all the pulling. I'll keep all the fun stuff. How about that? And then let go of all the boring, boring stuff. See, now you can get add so many layers and get such lovely color. But when you've already got paint on your sheet, um, it really does, it's not as absorbent. So uh, it's much easier to pull all the undercoatings with fresh paper, okay? So let me get a few things together and turn on some music and I will be back.
flip through these real quick. I think they came out pretty cool. Here's that one. Now, my idea on these is to, I'm not always thrilled with the stark white, but on this print I like it because it really draws out the black. But some of these I'm going to stain with watercolor or um, coffee just to kind of pull them all together. So let's see what else we've got here. Because sometimes they look a little unfinished to me. Like I really love this, but it's got some, you know, spots in here that I'd kind of like to have a little bit more color on. This one's really cool too. I like it. This is really neat. I love this one. This is tissue paper and I had crumpled this piece up before I put it on the plate and I really like how this came out. Now, all these papers, these ones here were just printer paper and I definitely need to up my um, paper supply because I don't have any rice paper. I don't have like onion skin paper. I just don't have those papers right now so I'm kind of working with what I've got. This one is Canson mixed media paper and I love how this print came out. This was the tribal or the cave et etchings, one of the two here. This one I just think is so cool. It's I just pulled the edge of this print and I love how this came out. This is tissue paper here. This is more printer paper and printer paper is just not the greatest for jelly printing, I don't think anyway. So, but I love this bronze. This is the bronze and it's either the burnt sienna or quinacridone. Nicolazo gold. Okay, my house is really chilly in here today and I don't know if warming up my plate has something to do with the temperature of the room being chillier, but it was really tough to get it warmed up and start getting all the good stuff off of the plate. It did eventually start to happen, but it took a long time. So this print, I think, came out really cool. I love the brightness of the turquoise and the brightness of the yellow and the orange on this one here. This one I just kept uh, layering and layering and layering. It's okay. It's not my favorite. I'd like to just do some more layers on top of it. This one's pretty fun. I pulled, I, I used some of these sheets just to kind of get some of the paint off of my stencils. And um, this one I had the Titan Buff print underneath and then ended up with this uh, Burnt Sienna print on top. And I think this would be very cool, just like coffee stained to kind of wash out some of the white in the background. I know you lose a little of the graphicness, so I'm not real thrilled about that. Now this I love. I hope you guys can see that Outback print right here. I wish I would have had a better print pulled, but just as far as grunge paper goes, this I love this sheet right here. I think it's really pretty, really grungy. So there's those and then I went ahead and used the bamboo and this is what I ended up with and I, I must have had quite a bit of green on the plate because it pulled up a lot of green and I did not use any green today so I'm not sure what was happening there. That had to be the underlayer of everything. Again I mixed that Nicolazo gold and uh, la, 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 yellow ochre. So that's how I was getting these colors together here. A really nice combo, those two. And then this one I did the sepia, and then I laid the stencil down. This sepia is fluid. I don't know if I would continue to use fluid for the stencils because it was just really wet and it took a long time to dry. And then I went over top with the Titan Buff. Plus, the sepia, I think because it's a fluid, um, I didn't get as strong of a of a like a stone wall print that I wanted out of it. So I'll have to do this one again with maybe a thicker 
brown type paint but I still love the way this came out and it picked up some of the turquoise it picked up all different kinds of stuff so the plate finally started to get warmed up now these are some grunge prints that I pulled from warming up the plate I just pulled this I had rolled some I'd used my brayer to roll my little or jelly print with the leftover um, fluid sepia and it bubbled on my 8x10 jelly plate and so I was like that's really pretty so I just went ahead and pulled a print of that and I probably won't if I do stain this I'll stain it with blue or something because I don't want to lose any of this the bubbling but that really came out cool I like that one these are just some of my brayer sheets but I think they're pretty neat too this could use a couple more layers just to kind of pull it together and then this was that tissue page I did right at the beginning and I just really like how this one came out I think I this one is finished I like it as is I like all the lighter lines going through it I just think it's really cool and then it picked up some black grunge there some of these grunge ones really came out neat. I love this. I just love the brightness. That nickel azo gold is such a powerful color. This one here, it's so um, pigmented and just really, really got some nice color to it. A lot of depth. That's the word I'm looking for, depth. And then I did some bronze. This is the iridescent bronze and I'm sad this one's gone I used that one up and I used my teal up so I'm completely out of teal which is a bummer I'm gonna be getting some more of that ASAP this one I love how this one came out it started pulling up all that great under uh, all the under layers started to come up on this Ugh, this one is really just gorgeous. Love it. See, I just kind of wish I had more of a consistency of color, but the variation is nice. I just don't always like all that. But, you know, it's probably beautiful, and it's probably just me picking on my own art. <laughs> kind of good at that at times. This one came out really nice. I like the subtlety. I got a lot of stuff picked up from the plate on this print here and I don't know how this ended up so subtle but it's just so nice. Jelly printing is so magical. Alright, this one picked up a lot of the grunge and this is that yellow ochre and I like the brightness of this, although I'd probably like to do a stenciled print over this, probably some kind of more layering going on there. And then now this is actual watercolor paper I just had sitting in my pile of paper and these are the two that I put together and pulled and they really pulled up a lot of the under layers so I'm thinking you really need a very absorbent paper to really start pulling those up because I had much better luck pulling stuff up with the absorbent paper than I did with the printer paper or anything else so there's something to keep in mind this newsprint this is just that cheap counts and newsprint paper it did a pretty good job of pulling up some of that I think this would be a nice washi tape sheet collage sheet for sure okay now these are just some of my brayered sheets and some of these really come out cool I like all the colors in this I like how that combo came out this one could use some more help it's still really nice though I like that olive green not sure what color that is some of these are layered from a long time ago this one was from today and I'm not sure where the greens coming from but I just love 
all the teal in here. I think it really came out cool. This is an old one. I'm thinking I'm going to, you know, layer these up a little bit more and make a paper kit out of these. So that's the end of this whole batch. And I love um, Patty's stencils. What I want to do, though, is I just want to use them as stencils traditionally because jelly printing, sometimes I struggle doing stenciling with jelly printing and I really shouldn't because the designs are nice and big and open so I think I just need better paper paper is really a huge part of the situation so I'm glad you stopped by for this video and I'll be doing all kinds of fun stuff coming up see you soon mm -hmm.